Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Lost in Space, Season 1. So, as always, I'm going to give it the good, the bad, and the furry. So, to start off with the furry, um, there really isn't a whole lot of furry outside of the eels. So, yeah, uh, which you learn about really early on, so it's not like any time spoiler. So, moving on to the good and the bad. This is a TV show. Uh, I just want to preface this with I've never seen the early 80s, 90s, whatever, whatever Lost in Space the other TV show was. Never saw it. Um, <laughs> uh, I have, however, seen the Lost in Space the movie with Matt LeBlanc several times. And I loved that movie because I love Matt LeBlanc in that movie, as well as the whole Robinson family and Dr. Smith, like the actors and actresses who play them. Fantastic. Um, I don't remember the critical or commercial success of the movie, but I enjoyed the whole thing throughout. There's a super badass scene with Matt Le There's two super badass scenes with Matt LeBlanc, and it's just awesome to see him not be just Joey from Friends, because this came out, I think, when he was still Joey from Friends. And I thought he kicked ass, and the whole movie was just fantastic. This show is a TV show, so it has to lengthen some things out, but uh, the, same, the general premise of you have a family who uh, gets stranded somewhere and they have to survive through a whole bunch of, of adversary and just take that on and, and win and stay alive. Uh, in this particular take, what it is is that there's Earth. Earth is, of course, dying, just as in the other Lost in Space. Uh, so they are on a colony ship. And it's really more of like a carrier ship with a whole bunch of colony ships that are headed to Alpha Centauri. And something happens, and uh, the ships, like the little mini-ships, which are called Jupiters, which in the movie, it was Jupiter 2, and so now they have Jupiters. So, yeah, it's just fun. Um, but yeah, so the little mini-ships that each family had, the Jupiters, uh, a whole bunch of them had to disconnect, and they crash-landed on a, on a planet, and then they have to survive. Um, I thought that they kept really good beats of the story in line with the movie, and I assume, but again, haven't seen, the TV show from back in the day, where you have the really smart little kid, 10-year-old, 8-year-old, however old he's supposed to be, and then uh, I think that they upped the ages of his sisters a little bit, but still had them, you know, be super intelligent, and uh, then you had, in this case, uh, you know, they switched from having the dad be the super doctor, and then the mother be, at least from my memory in the movie, uh, just there, I guess as like a medical... Uh, but um, in this one, the dad is like a Marine, Special Forces type guy, so he's smart, but about like combat type things and survival type things. And then the mother is like an astrophysicist, so she's like a big, you know, 100 pound brain type person. And that was fun to see. Um, and how they introduced Robot uh, was fun. I did think that, so I know from the movie and from just general knowledge from like, I don't know, trivia about the movie, but the old show, but like, the old robot could mostly just say, Danger Will Robinson. And in this one, that's pretty much all he says as well. Which I think was a little hokey. Like, I don't think it... I don't think it flowed as well, because if this robot is smart enough to learn English, or learn any language but it's whatever alien language, that quickly to say, Danger Will Robinson, it should be able to say more. So I don't think that they adequately explained why the robot doesn't really say more than that, but could immediately say that and have it in a, like, make sense context, not just, like, you know, thinking that danger means, like, tree bark or something. So I don't think that made sense. They never explained it properly. It felt like they were just kind of, you know, referencing the old show and the old movie without adequately explaining it. That being said, if the robot could do all the speaking, I understand that, like, the mystery of the robot's origins and why things were happening and how smart he was or wasn't and how much of a like robot versus an AI versus whatever else he could be would be harder to keep a mystery. But I feel like they could have done a little better than just like, hey, we're referencing the old movie, huh? 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 We don't have to explain why, but it works for our purposes, huh? Yeah, so I thought, okay, they could have done that better. Um, but the this is a show with a whole bunch of kid actors and, or at least... I, you know, they look like kid actors. I don't know if the older sisters 
were necessarily kid actors. You know how you get like 20-somethings or early 30-somethings to play kid actors sometimes, and you're just like, yeah, you're a 30-year-old in high school, sure. Um, it didn't get that feel to me. It felt like they chose adequately young-looking actors and actresses to play the kids that they were supposed to be. Um, and with a show with a whole bunch of kid actors, it could fail miserably. Talking to you, episode one Anakin. Just say. But in this one, excellent acting all around. It all really works. Uh, even with some of the hokey dialogue given to uh, the eight, ten-year-old male kid, whatever. So, um, yeah, I thought it all worked. And it was fun to see them, like, slowly show you more of the capabilities of the ship and the capabilities of the actors involved. And then um, the other extra characters that they added, uh, like the mechanic guy, he is just my favorite. He is awesome. I loved him. He's fantastic. Um, so, yeah. And Dr. Smith is just... I really like what they chose with Dr. Smith, which uh, in the movie it was just like, oh, hey, he's a, he's a medical doctor-y type person uh, who's doing bad things and then gets caught. And here, it's like, I really like what they did where she's essentially a career criminal, and, but she you know, figures out a way to pretend to be this Dr. Smith, and she just kind of rolls with it, and in a very believable way. So I, there was a couple times where I was like, ooh, is that the, is that the lie you're going to go with? But overall... I think that her manipulations and lies and everything else to do what she wanted to do, I think it generally made sense and I think it generally worked. So, yeah, I very much enjoyed this show. Uh, I'm glad that it got a second season because they definitely left this season on a cliffhanger, but in a way that I think that had they not known they were getting a second season, I, they very easily could have just changed the last five, ten minutes and then had a, uh, a non-cliffhanger ending that would have been satisfactory, I think. Um, so, yeah, it was a cliffhanger ending, but in a way that I was acceptable with because we already knew we were getting the second season. Um, so, yeah. But overall, I would say that um, this is a fun time. You can have it on in the background, and you're going to have a fun time. Uh, there's... I appreciated the number of like outdoor settings and like technology that they showed and like the all the sets and and whatnot and the vehicles and everything else. Like I thought that they did those really well, um, and they made it made sense within the universe and the like scenario of colonies. You know, these family colonists and their ships and whatnot. I thought that that all worked really well. But you don't necessarily need to watch it on a big screen. I think that having it on some type of mobile device going on in the background or while you're doing other things. I think that's perfectly doable with this. Yes, there's a couple of cool CGI shots, but overall, uh, I would say that you can have it on the background, and you're going to have a good time. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you at the next one. Bye!